How can a stroke survivor learn to walk again, even after part of their brain is damaged? The answer lies in neuroplasticity. When someone has a stroke, the damaged area may lose function, but the surrounding brain areas, or even the opposite hemisphere, can take over. This is what we are going to discuss in this second episode, how neuroplasticity takes place in stroke recovery. Stay tuned. Neuroplasticity is the brain's amazing ability to change, adapt, and form new connections after injury. In brain, this happens in two types, structural and functional neuroplasticity. The functional type is important here in stroke patients. In this type, the surrounding brain areas, or even the opposite hemisphere, can take over if the right training is given. MRP is built on this concept. We don't just move the limbs, we help the brain relearn how to control movement. If a patient doesn't use their affected side, the brain map for that area shrinks, use it or lose it. This is also called learn non-use, and it happens very commonly after stroke. But if the patient practices movements with the affected side, even imperfectly, those brain areas light up and grow. Use it and improve it. That's why MRP avoids compensation and encourages the use of the affected side early and often. Motor control is how the brain plans and executes movement. It happens in steps. The steps involves sensory input. Where is my arm? What am I touching? Planning. What muscles need to activate and when? Execution. Smooth, coordinated motion. After a stroke, motor control is often disrupted. Movements become awkward, delayed, or effortful. MRP helps retrain these motor control pathways through structured practice and task repetition. Let's take a look how MRP uses neuroplasticity. It works by repeating real-life functional tasks, providing sensory feedback, visual, tactile, verbal, encouraging active problem solving by the patient, minimizing compensation so the brain stays focused on the correct limb or motion. These are some concepts of MRP approach in neuro rehabilitation. For example, a patient learning to stand might, one, feel where their weight is shifting, sensory input, two, adjust posture and engage muscles, motor planning, three, Repeat the correct strategy until it becomes automatic motor learning. This activates the neuroplastic loop. Train, reinforce, rewire. MARRP doesn't just exercise muscles, it teaches the brain how to control them again. Let's say your patient wants to use their affected hand to comb their hair. With MRP, you start by analyzing their current ability. Can they lift their arm? Can they grasp? You train missing components like shoulder flexion and grip. The strength and range of motion increases with time. The tone might also increase here and synergy might develop. But remember, purposeful training outcomes will be far better than the traditional ones. Then you practice the full task repeatedly with feedback. Over time, the brain rewires and the patient regains control. It's not just repetition, it's purposeful, progressive, and brain-driven movement. That's why it works, and that's why task-specific rehab is essential in stroke and neurocases. You are finding the missing component first, training the missing component, and integrating the learning and functional task. This leads to functional neuroplasticity. So remember, neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to adapt and recover. Motor control is how movement is planned and executed. MRP leverages both using targeted practice to help the brain relearn movement. Next up in the series, MRP versus traditional neuro rehab approaches. Thanks for watching.